Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the March Garden Checklist video. I do these uh, each month and just go through a list of things that you might want to be thinking about uh, doing in your garden and uh, things you may want to avoid uh, doing in your garden depending on the uh, time of year that it is. I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina, Zone 7B. So those of you who are in high, you know, Zones 8 or 9 might want to jump on these things pretty quick. And those of you who are in Zones 5 and 6 probably are a little behind uh, where I'm at uh, at this point. So let's get started. Uh, with March. Uh, March is a great month to be planting and there's all kinds of things that we can be planting. There's bare root roses and fruit trees, probably as good a selection as you're going to find uh, at any time of the year in March. Uh, of course shrubs and trees are coming into the garden centers fast and furious right now. One thing to think about as you're shopping for plants uh, in March uh, my frost, my average last frost date is around April 15th. Uh, you can look this up pretty easily. All you have to do is Google your zip code and uh, or the city that you live in and ask what your horticultural zone is, and, uh, and or and your frost free date. You can learn those two things pretty quickly on Google. Uh, again, I'm in Zone 7B and my average last frost date is April 15th. I don't want to be putting things out that are super cold sensitive uh, in March. Uh, the things I want to put in the ground are going to be hardy shrubs and trees and um, th things that are just, that are very hardy in my area. And one thing to look for is that there's not a lot of new growth on them. If you're, if you're going to a garden center in early March and they have a great selection of stuff, if it has a lot of new growth on it, likely it came out of a house. I'm not discouraging you from buying those things, but I am just, just, just think about when you get home, if you do put them in the ground, you may end up having to cover them. You may want to just offer them some protection for a few weeks and, until you get past your threats, your worst threats of frost and freezes before you put those cold sensitive things in the ground. The other thing to do right now when you're shopping is you can go ahead and buy your summer bulbs. And that's going to be uh, things like cannas and dahlias and elephant ears are all available right now, but it's a little early to be putting them uh, out. But you can go ahead and get them so because there's going to be a good selection of them. One other thing is it's still a perfectly good time to be transplanting things. And so if you've got some uh, perennials uh, from last year that you want to dig up and divide, you want to divide some liriope, uh, any kind of uh, grasses uh, and any kind of shrub, you still want to transplant. The earlier in the spring you do that, the better. One last thought on plant shopping uh, at this time of the year. Again, my frost free dates around April 15th. When you go to some of these places to shop, um, mostly more, more on the box store side, they will put out geraniums and Boston ferns and a lot of the summer things to lure you in. And in my area, at least, it's too early for those things. Maybe if you're down in zone nine along the Gulf, it's okay at this point, don't know. You, you know that's something you need to learn about um, your area by Googling it. But again, just to, you know, try to avoid um, the trap of buying summer flowering annuals uh, six weeks before um, it's time to actually be putting them in the ground. So March is a great month for starting seeds. Uh, a lot of the uh, annual plants and perennial flowers that you're going to grow during the season can be done from seed. I have lots of videos on my channel for seed starting. I have a uh, light um, rack inside. Uh, there are outdoor techniques uh, as well that you can use to uh, start seeds. Uh, you don't necessarily need something like I have inside, but it is super helpful uh, to, have, uh, to, to have lights and to, uh, and to start them inside. And then of course vegetables. It's probably a little too late to start the cool season vegetables at this point. I have seeded those things several weeks ago. And if you're following my channel this week, well, last week I weeded my vegetable garden and put down a layer of fresh compost. And this next week I'll be planting all of my uh, cool season vegetables. If you wanna do a round of cool season vegetables and that's gonna be broccoli and lettuces and um, beets and things like that, you may wanna buy them as plants uh, at this point um, but because it really is about time to be putting those in the ground. Your summer vegetables though, your tomatoes and peppers and cucumbers and all of those things, um, it is time to start the seeds on those, uh, on those items. I'm shooting this video. It's going to go up March 1st. Again, my frost free window is about April 15th. That's six weeks. Okay. A lot of these seeds don't need six weeks. And so try to time them 
where they're going to be ready to go in the ground. And so if you look at the back of the packets on the seed, it'll say this seed takes four to six weeks. And you may want to start that about four weeks before you desire putting them in the ground. Okay, if you start things, if you start something that only takes four weeks from seed at the six week part, at the six weeks, uh, then that's two extra weeks. They're in the tray and a lot of times they'll end up stretched and, um, and just not, they get over vigorous uh, in the trays and, and, and kind of leggy. So I mentioned annual and perennial flowering things, uh, seeding those now in the summer vegetables. Herbs are another thing that you can think about starting uh, right now from seed as well. Again, do the same thing on the back of the packet with how long it takes for them to uh, mature from seed. Uh, the other things that should be available now will be asparagus, uh, strawberry plants, uh, potatoes. Seed potatoes are available now. And if you follow my channel, I'll be doing my potato planting video uh, this coming week. So let's move on to uh, preparing for big spring projects. Uh, March is probably the easiest month of the year to do bed edging. You know, edging around your turf, edging in areas where you're going to create new beds. You can lay them out with a, you know, the garden hose or something like that, or paint lines on the ground and start doing, you know, cutting in those beds. That freeze thaw makes the ground a little bit softer uh, in March, and it's also a little bit moist. Uh, but be careful to not put a crazy amount of foot traffic uh, in areas where you don't have to because the ground is soft and it is wet. You can create a lot of compaction uh, this time of year. Uh, I talked about the fact that I had just weeded uh, the vegetable garden and composted the vegetable garden. Your whole yard really needs to be weeded uh, this, this time of year. March is super important for this because the hen bit and the chickweed uh, and the winter weeds like Poana are going to very quickly seed themselves. As soon as, it, as soon as the soil temperature warms up a little bit, those things go absolutely bonkers uh, right at the end of winter. They die pretty quickly. They're annual weeds and they'll disappear, but they will leave a bazillion seeds uh, if you don't work on getting them out. And then other things I'm going to be doing this time of year are, you know, I leave the leaves uh, in my beds and I'll continue to leave the leaves in my beds, but any areas where they kind of piled up a bunch around shrubs, I probably will go back and pull it back uh, just a little bit. So again, if you follow my channel, just a few days ago, I put up a uh, fertilizing video. I fertilize once a year and I fertilize everything all at the same time. I always use an organic uh, fertilizer, uh, mainly because uh, my goal uh, is always soil improvement. So through, either through compost or mulch breaking down, and organic fertilizer. I am always just trying to improve the soil. I want to feed the soil and let the soil take care of the plants. Uh, with that said, um, organic fertilizer works, um, feeds the soil microbes and the microbes make nutrients available for your plants. It's early in the season now and the ground's still a little bit cold. So uh, the beauty of being able to use the organic fertilizer is it won't really work until it actually warms up. So it's a lot more difficult to burn. Uh, your plants. Uh, if you use a synthetic fertilizer, which is fine, uh, you know, that, that, that's your choice. I would wait um, much later um, or closer to your frost free date because those fertilizers will kick your plants in pretty quick and leaving them vulnerable to, uh, to freeze. But again, I use the, if you go back and look at that video, I fertilize my trees, shrubs, uh, bulbs, perennials, uh, annuals that I have in the ground, my vegetable garden, everything all at once with the same fertilizer once a year. So March is still a good time to prune uh, grasses you need to get on sooner than later, your, all your ornamental grasses, because the new growth is going to start coming into those pretty quick. It gets much harder to do later. Uh, liriope, uh, if you have liriope, can, you, know, you can just mow that off with a uh, lawnmower typically. Uh, any of your perennials that are still standing, I leave a lot of my uh, perennials through the winter because the birds uh, take advantage of the uh, seeds. Uh, those can go ahead and be cut back at this point. If you've got ground covers like ground cover junipers and things like that, you can give those a little bit of a haircut. Uh, fruit plants, uh, blueberries, uh, this is the actual time of year to be, um, to be pruning those if you're going to prune them read uh, about pruning blueberries before you start pruning your blueberries. You don't want to do general pruning on blueberries. You actually cut out the oldest wood and any wood that's going to overlap one another. But that's something you want to read about before you do it. Uh, figs can be pruned now as another fruit plant that can be pruned now. And then that goes over to flowering shrubs and flowering shrubs are a little more uh, difficult. You need to know what you have because there's a lot of things like uh, these azaleas behind me that have their flower buds on them already. If I prune them, I'm going to lose the flowers. So you need to know what you have before you start pruning it. 
As a rule, if you don't know what it is, uh, you can prune it after it flowers and you'll be fine. There are a lot of flowering shrubs though that would benefit from being pruned in the winter if they needed it, but you need to know what those are because if you prune the wrong ones, you'll be pruning off uh, flowers. Um, I've put some uh, list up uh, here uh, beside me uh, if uh, that will help with a few things. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to put up every single plant when to prune it, but uh, here's a few things you would want to uh, prune uh, after they flower for sure. So a couple other things on your spring bulbs that should be coming up now, your daffodils and tulips and all of those kinds of things. Uh, make sure that after they finish flowering, if they finish flowering during the month of March, that you don't cut that foliage back. They need that foliage to collect the sun's energy and put it back into the bulb. If you think you need to uh, know where they are, just in case you need to divide them later or not plant something directly over them or dig them up by accident, make sure you take photos of them or draw them out on some sort of map uh, in your yard, the exact locations of all your bulbs so you don't damage them later. I talked about it still being a good time to transplant uh, trees and shrubs. Uh, it's also a good time to be dividing perennials. So if you have hosta and daylilies and uh, those kinds of things, you can pop those out of the ground and cut them in half and divide them. Liriope is another thing. Uh, anything that's dividable, now would be a good time to do it. Even your ornamental grasses, if you could pop those out of the ground, you can cut them in half with a shovel and now you got two of them uh, pretty quickly. Uh, be prepared to cover things, uh, if you're, especially if you're doing new planting uh, installations because those plants are going to be more fragile for sure, with or without new growth on them. Uh, they're going to be smaller than a lot of the mature things uh, that are in your yard. But be, just be prepared with sheets and that kind of thing uh, for you know, surprise uh, freezes and frost as we move forward. So I have a warm season turf uh, here. Um, it's uh, zoysia grass and it's completely dormant right now. I won't do any fertilizing on this zoysia until it starts to wake up in April. If you're gonna do um, any kind of uh, new installation of warm season grass, I would wait until, wait, wait until then. Seeding of centipede or zoysia or um, Bermuda grass, any of those that you'd be installing. But March is the month really to be thinking about all your cool season grasses. That's gonna be bluegrass and fescue and perennial uh, rye. Uh, this is the time to be seeding those. If you need to dethatch and uh, aerate, uh, this would be a, a good time to do that um, and then fertilize those uh, during the uh, month of March for sure. So one thing I'd like to talk about is during the month of February we had extreme below normal temperatures uh, drop well into you know South Texas uh, which was extremely unusual. I was very lucky on the other side of Appalachia to yeah, have pretty much normal winter temperatures through that. Um, those of you who have damaged plants from that, you may want to give those things some time uh, going into uh, spring and allow them to flush out a little bit um, from down low if they're, if they're alive. Hopefully, hopefully they're alive. Let them kind of tell you um, where they were killed back to before you start pruning on them and then prune them down to that level uh, at that point. That's what I would encourage you to do with that stuff and leave the the kind of dead material on top of it for a little while longer. March is a great month for planning, especially if you're in zone five or six and you still can't really get out if you got snow cover. Um, you definitely want to, you can you know, continue to plan what you're going to be doing uh, for the spring and uh, be thinking about adding pollinator uh, friendly plants uh, in your landscape. Things like dill and fennel and uh, milkweed are great host plant, uh, plants for caterpillars. We tend to feed the butterflies lots, um, you know, with butterfly bushes and salvias and things like that, but we don't necessarily give them a place to, uh, uh, to uh, lay their uh, larva. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind as you're planning uh, your garden, because that's a fun, you know, that's a kind of a fun thing to invite those things uh, into your yard. Same thing with birds. You know, make, you know, having a bird friendly uh, yard, thinking about perennials, um, uh, like cone flowers and black eyed Susans and things that the birds actually will feed on during the winter time um, are also entertaining as well. So March is definitely a great month to do soil testing. You can check with your um, extension agent in your county and find out how you go about um, getting your soil tested. At least do a pH test if you've never had a pH test. I have a video on my channel for why pH is so important and maybe you'll get something um, from, you know, from that video and uh, based on what your pH is um, this is a good month to uh, start a compost pile if you've um, had that as a plan. I've been piling up things back here and I'm about to build a frame around it. 
And uh, of course, um, you know, taking notes, I mean, I say this in every single one of these videos, but it is kind of important to take notes on, you know, where you've planted things. Um, you know, our memories are not that great, uh, you know, when, you, when we're doing all of these activities in the yard. Um, so writing things down uh, is a good idea. Your successes and your failures from each season, you know, when you put broccoli in this year, you know, if you write that down the next year, if you, you know, it may be that you want to do it two weeks later or two weeks earlier. Uh, March, of course, you know, we're about to have to use all our tools. And so your lawnmower and your weed eater and, you know, all of those things probably need a uh, service at this point if you didn't do it uh, going into winter. So I put in a drip irrigation system here uh, last year. Um, if you're planning on doing drip irrigation uh, in your yard at some point, March will be a great month to lay out all those pipes um, before you get going on um, all of your other projects during the season. I have several videos on my channel from the, just the basics of the pieces and parts uh, for a drip irrigation system to you know, slightly more advanced uh, videos on drip irrigation. Just a few other things before I wrap this up. Uh, March is a great month for just general cleanup, uh, power washing uh, driveways and patio furniture and cleaning out bird um, houses and uh, um, cleaning up bird feeders and cleaning uh, bird baths. Uh, all of those kinds of uh, projects I like to take on before uh, spring is upon us. And one other thing I'll tackle, um, I'm about to bring my house plants back outside in April. So any kind of uh, transplanting or dividing or fertilizing or cutting back and getting those things into shape, I'll probably work on those uh, during the month of March as well. Thank you guys very much for following along with these monthly um, checklist videos. Um, I'll be back in April with another one. Thanks for watching.